Hold on, hold on. We got 629. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I got to turn off my silent vibrate. Yeah, everyone vibrate. Oh, do you want me to say this? Call to order. Pledge of Allegiance. Sure. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice for all. Jen, can you take your roll call, please? Okay. Mr. Eastick? Present. Mr. Rowley? Here. Mr. Reiner? Here. Mr. Jennings? Here. Uh, I need a motion to elect the officers for the balance of 2013. I would like to nominate Kirk Jennings for president. Second. And I would like to move that motion be closed. Second. I'll second the closure. I oppose the amendment. Okay. Take a lie detector. <laughs> Take a roll on that. Mr. Ryder? Yes. Mr. Eastick? Yes. Mr. Willie? Yes. Mr. Jennings? Hey, I'm staying. Can I get a motion for the office of vice president? I will nominate John Ryder. If you want to do it. I'll second. Or you get the post office. Any discussion on the roll? Let's have roll on there. Yes. Mr. Eastek. Yes. Mr. Rowley. Yes. Mr. Rayner. Yes. Why don't we need a motion to close that? We need a motion to close the first box. I'm just asking. That's you. That's you. Right. Now, I'd like to approve the appointment of Richard Hendricks to serve as the board member through December 31st, 2015. This is to fill a vacancy created by the resignation of board member Doug Jones. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Uh, discussion? Who's Richard Hendricks? <laughs> <laughs> I would say... I'm going to guess it's one of the four people in the <laughs> That's him! <laughs> <laughs> no, Stand up, Richard. <laughs> I will say that um, having been involved with the nine candidates that expressed tremendous interest, all of them were quite dedicated and enthused to have a chance. We then narrowed down after ten minutes of speaking with each, which wasn't enough, I know, but we had to limit it. We narrowed down to a smaller pool of what we thought were the four most likely candidates. And then the three of us, John was ill at the time, unfortunately, we spent a half hour or more with each of the three, and each of the four candidates, and we really looked at all the qualities, attributes, everything that they would bring to the board for the next two years. And quite honestly, you could throw a dart at any of the four names, and we would have done well for the district. Absolutely. And quite honestly, any of the other nine, or the five that weren't invited back would not have done bad for the district. So. At the end of that process, it, it just came down to having to make a decision. And the selection of Mr. Hendricks, by no means, is a um, negative mark on the other three. Um, there's no need to give you the names of the other three. They came close. They know who they are. And, but based on this, I would like to welcome Mr. Hendricks to help serve us for the next two years, four months. Thank you. Yeah, now we have to actually vote on it, so you can't say thank you. Okay. <laughs> I do want to add that I, I think one of the hardest decisions the board had to make, especially especially when you get to the final four. I don't want to do like a basketball thing, but I mean it was it was really that the final four was extreme, extremely difficult. Well, you know what? The hard part of calling everybody, and I don't know why you guys didn't step up and volunteer. Because you're the president, <laughs> um, vice president. Pseudo. Yeah. You never want to deliver. And it's not bad news if it's, of course, it's not life and death, death news. But you don't want to deliver that news. And everyone I talked to was very conciliatory and appreciative of our process. They didn't even think they'd get a chance to talk. Oh. And the second level process, they loved the opportunity to talk more. So I think that may, might be a good precedence if we ever have to do this process. And to add one last thing, I think not only the four, but the 11 that were present all 11 of them, and I think you sort of touched on them. It, it shows, uh, the whole group shows the passion that's still in the district. You know, all of them were dynamic, the last four were exceptional, but I mean, all of them were dynamic, and all of them probably could have done a good job. 
but to have that much passion in the district shows that the district is alive, and most importantly, we're growing, we're not shrinking. Right. We're, you know, and for a while we were we were curious, but the tree's growing again and full steam ahead. Chris, just to get Chris, I love you have to remember these in Poland. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, those kids are in Poland. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> That's it. Um, and just one last comment, just to point out, just to give you a little insight of what happened in our interview session, is that um, we definitely gave them a chance to talk about why they're enthused about being on the board, but we actually asked them to criticize what they knew of the current board for the last five or six years of activities. And it sounded like pretty much across the board, unless I'm forgetting something, across the board everyone said they just wanted to be part of the momentum that they've seen really starting to take hold. That's not because of the board. I think in large part, Mino and, and the board have collectively worked and jammed to focus on the, the numerics of our budgets. The combination of everything we've done, I think everyone wanted to be part of it. So that was encouraging. So with that, I close discussion. Okay. Roll, please. Okay. Mr. Rowley? Yes. Mr. Reiner? Yes. Mr. Stick? Yes. Mr. Jennings? Yes. So with that, Rich, we need to uh, swear you in, and then you will sit upon the infamous board table. Uh, Actually, you guys have to get, yeah, that's me, but you well, have I to get sworn in, too, because you're president and vice president. Yes. Wait, all three of us have I'm doing it all three at one time. Oh, all three. All you it's cheaper do that way. It's, 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 it's not what I do this time. You, 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 <laughs> you save a little bit of money here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure my husband wouldn't mind at all. I didn't have any okay. issues. I don't know. That's why do I you, you Kurt Jennings, John Breyer, and Richard Hendricks solemnly swear oh. that you will support the Constitution of the United States? and the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and that you will faithfully and impartially discharge your duties as President, Vice President, and Board Member, in and for the Letonia Exempted Village School District, Columbia County, to the best of your ability, in accordance with the laws now in effect and hereafter, to be enacted during your continuance in said office and until your successor, successor is chosen and qualified. Welcome to the Board. Take a motion to approve the minutes of last regular meeting on July 25th and the August 1st special meeting. What are the motion? Um, second? Se second. Any discussion? Pretty straightforward. Thank you, again, Cheryl. Uh, Jen, call roll, please. Mr. Yusek? Yes. Mr. Raleigh? Yes. Mr. Snyder? Mr. Hendricks? Mr. Hendricks? Mr. Jennings? Yes. We talked about it. <laughs> All right. Um, now let's move to number seven, the treasurer's report. Jen, you've got a whole bill of uh, items. So go ahead. Okay. Attached in the treasurer's report is bills counts payable as well as board reports. The donations that we received last month were $145 from the Italian American Club for the football supplemental fund, and the following were from the Legion, 254 football t-shirts, 200 for eighth grade cheerleader warm-ups, 200 for golf t-shirts, and the donations from the VFW in Washingtonville were 250 for the football supplemental fund and $100 for the golf team supplemental fund. And we're going to approve Shakely once again as our workers' comp and TPA for unemployment for $490 which is actually a savings from last year. Is it the same thing? Same thing, just cheaper price. They lowered their price. Good deal. Now the motion for 7, 8, and B? Motion. Hey, Jim, real quick question, and I know you've been, what, three years now, but 
Are these numbers the same? Do we start to collect the same amounts of donations? Are we getting more? We seem to be getting more. I thought so. Yeah. yeah. We've got 12, almost $1,200 on the table right here between those two. So hats off to both. And is it unsolicited or do we have an effort to campaign well, for needs? Usually with the clubs, we have to actually request donations from them because that's the way that they do it. So if, as long as, and they like to give to us, they have told well, Mr. McElduff. Some of them, according to the Constitution, they have to. They have to. Well, and also, it, it helps us keep our budget from raising every year, correct? I mean, doesn't this sort of help A lot you? of them are for extracurricular activities, so that it does help sports or like student council or things like that, so. Yeah. And, and the only reason I ask, short of the grant process, is there something in between where there's larger, might also be an opportunity to solicit some addition. And well, we might try to span out most, a little bit Most of area. that solicitation is done through yearbook. They solicit a lot of the bigger companies and groups. Now, remember too, with the um, sports ads, there's a wide variety of companies that place ads in okay. the football that's programs. Right. That's, so that's That's where most of them, the football yeah. one is the one that takes in the most. Really? So. All right, thank you. Did we do? We did the final vote. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have public participation. Mm -hmm. We have to vote. No. Discussed. No. Yeah. Yeah. There's two more on the other side. Oh, is there two more? Yeah, that's where I saw the okay. cheerleading. Oh, yeah. The middle school cheerleader and the junior class activity budget, too, we need to approve. Sorry, we already made the motion. Sorry. We'll let it sit. Sorry. Uh, no more discussion. Can we call the roll? Mr. Ryder? Yes. Mr. Reisnick? Yes. Mr. Roy? Yes. Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Mr. Jennings? Yes. Was there any public participation? <laughs> no. All three of you, have you all three waived your interest in publicly participating? Okay. Now let's move on to old business. The student student reports over the new business. Uh, I'll start with. Uh, a, one through seven, as a, for a motion. 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 Second. Uh, discussion. Uh, the appointmentary, appointmentary may was approved at the last meeting for the remainder of this year, and then their contracts are up, so we're going on. And once again, that's uh, not an addition. That was uh, Cheryl Thorne's position. Question: uh, As far as the, the uh, cook position, okay, is, are these all these are all the um, renewals. Yes. What happened was uh, uh, we uh, hired Bruce Sarone as a secretary. With the secretary, and, and, so she was her, six and a half. Her position was taken over by Joanne Morris. So that's okay. number three, and then mm -hmm. Joanne's position by Karen Reed, yeah. number four, and then the employment of Sheriff Morrow as the uh, oncoming uh, position. Oh. Okay, so are all cook, are all cook positions still done? No, they're all fine. Okay, we're done then. Okay. And, and I will say that there's quite an interview process. I know that Russ and um, that the vet works for nutrition. We've had Russ as a supervisor sitting on the interviews. Right. Uh, they interviewed probably We've probably had 25 candidates. How many applicants do we have? We have about 50 applicants. About 50 applicants. Wow. wow. For a three-hour job? For, for the three cook position? Our, for the three, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, they did a lot of interviewing and, and like, like, so it's it's a lot of monitoring. <laughs> single monitoring. So that's all the discussion. I have any questions? No. Yeah. Go ahead. So that's A through C. You good? That's A one through seven. Oh, we're gonna just yeah. We're gonna go to B and C. Yeah. As we do this next year. Yeah. We didn't get a motion. Motion. motion was called. We have Mike yeah. and John. Yeah. I just got a second. Okay. Okay. Well, discussion. I was trying to keep track of A, B, or C. Okay. Uh, can we call roll? Mr. Rowley? Yes. Mr. Rand? Yes. Mr. Hunter? Yes. Mr. Reese? Yes. Mr. Jennings? Yes. Mr. Yes. Do you want to do B and C together? Yes. Yeah. Because we're uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Hunter, so if I have some discussion, I'll do it by itself, but it's, if it's something I, I usually yeah. do okay. several at a time. The, uh, okay, uh, B and C and that's B and C together. Okay, I have a motion. Second. Anybody with discussion or questions? Yeah, I'll straight forward. Or, yeah, we'll carry over. Carry over. Yeah. 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 Ye
Okay. Roll call, please, Jim. Mr. Ryder? Yes. Mr. Lilly? Yes. Mr. Reister? Yes. Mr. Kendrick? Yes. Mr. Jennings? Yes. Uh, motion on D. Um, you did it with the motion on D. Trustee. I actually be all the way D through. Uh, okay, F. we're going to look for a motion on D through F, and then RB can kind of walk through it after the motion. Motion. Sorry. Every year I get confused on how this works. Oh, oh, sorry, there's a second. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. It just this confuses me. Transportation contracts with Dr. Harlan Christian, Cardinal Mooney, St. Paul's. How does that work again? The state pays us and then we pay them? or is that? We actually pay them in advance and then we file a T2 in the summer and they get the money back when we file the T2. Is it a complete even whitewash? Or do we, do we, it, do we, yeah, it's, it's, it's no like cost to us. Yeah, it's in and out. Okay. But we're not, we're sending out the amount it would have cost for us to bust that student in here. Yes. Not the cost of taking the student all the way to the Cardinal Moon. Correct. But whatever money we would get for busing them, we're just going to give it to Cardinal Mooney instead of us taking Per student. Over. Right, per student. Yeah, per, per student. student. I, mean, I just want to know how it was calculated. Is there a lot of the destination calculation? The, or the, there's a set amount by set the amount. state. Okay. And the minimum so, amount is usually what we give the parent to transport the student. Because if not, we would have to transport them ourselves. And it, right. it's much easier just to give the parent the money to transport It's them. a flat rate. Right. It's a, yeah, a flat rate. Okay. The, uh, Open enrollment, uh, the lunch prices, which I believe we talked about several board meetings ago. And uh, once again, uh, Mrs. Duke is going to, uh, eighth graders love it, they love it. She does a great job, her and Mrs. Barrett to Washington, D.C. I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't see the list of open enrollment in the uh, we, we had, you put it in here? The and I know we got two more, there was one or two, I signed yeah. something late this afternoon. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's still changing. It's still changing. It's 11D? Okay, I'm at 11D. Has, has the seesaw gone our favor yet? No. No. No, last year was the closest. It was 112 to 98. Yeah. As close as we've been. School, yeah. When we first started looking, I mean, when I first got it, at least I know Kurt was uh, yeah, we big on this, and we were talking about moving 40 to yeah. 45, almost 50 down. We haven't seen that, and we're not quite there. We're 28. Well, bringing yeah, the units in has yeah. helped a lot. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's good. Because then it's, it's the pendulum's in the right direction. You know, if right. a couple of years ago you're 50 down and you, and you can keep it in the teens or the single digits even better, right. then we're moving in the right way. You can't get to 11D3 because 11D2 is so long. And, uh, and that could change, right? And oh, you it's, have, it already nice, changed. Yeah, I know, right? It's changed today. It changes every day. All depends on the phone, huh? Yeah. Gotcha. My question, do we need to, it's too late now for this year, but do we need to start building a marketing campaign I think we did a couple of years and I think it worked well. We did some yeah. commercials and we talked about making phone calls and I think we should follow up with that. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely yeah. do think that we should continue uh, yeah. get back to that. Well, I think I started it. Get back to it. I hate to go on RB's thing, but you know, the, the district has changed. Unfortunately, we're one of the fortunate districts that don't have to deal with the red around us every day that we're the black and not the red. But once again, RB mentioned in Ballet, who's a local lead telling that he could come in here and he works for TV 27. This year, Jackson Milton wanted the TV 27. They said, we want a TV campaign like Lutonia did with you. So I don't know if you saw it. I think it was right around Easter. Jackson Milton hit for two months with a TV yep. campaign. That was a direct correlation of our campaign from, oh, well, that's two years ago. We used to three, two, that three years ago. Three, three, three years ago. So, I mean, that's sort of cool being ahead of the curve. I'm not going to revisit thinking, it. We could redo it. I was thinking instead, instead, of, instead of there's this pair of real gangly brothers trying to advertise vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably get some real stellar students out there trying to sell the same vegetables and wearing Latonia shirts. You could do that. That would be good. good. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. That should be tall. Oh. Stucker's <laughs> gone, though. He's, he wouldn't have been tall enough. Very good. <laughs> All right. No, I just, I'm just curious about trying to set up a plan to really pull more in with some marketing skills. So. Right. And I know that uh, Kurt was, big, was a real proponent and leader in that several years back. And, Maybe something that we need to sit down yeah, and really yeah. conscious, be conscious about the people. Oh, me. You're just, you're just, you're just, you're just, just, you're 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 just, you're
Okay, superintendent's report, real quick. Um, and have anything at first, but I told Kevin it was a short meeting, so I had to kind of find something to put uh, <laughs> Just wanted to say, I got to go to the uh, VFW last night in Washington for the Meet the Bears. And I know Cheryl was there, uh, Mr. Eastick was there. Um, a ton of people there. And it was, um, that's what I want to say, it was unbelievable. I mean, Mike touched on it, and I want to just reiterate what he said that the passion and enthusiasm. And it's just overwhelming. You, you went there, you were parking like it was the uh, yeah, Memorial Day Parade. Right. You were parking way down. Uh, yeah, and it was just uh, an amazing time. And yeah. people didn't want to leave. I'll tell you what, we sat down, people didn't want to leave. And you summed up with, uh, I wish I would have, I hope Kevin wrote it down, like you read it. What you said was exactly right. It was uh, just great. And uh, uh, the VFW paid for all of that. I think there was like 450 hot dogs, the chips, wow. the soda, the drink, the soda, water. And, and their workers did it too. We didn't have to clean We didn't do anything, yeah. clean up. They, they put up a, the, the PA. I was there, I was there, we were there so long, but they're taking it down. We're still there talking to them. Uh, and I just can't say thank you enough. Well, we send them a letter thing. Uh, yes. Jennifer's work, or Cheryl's working on that. That's awesome. Yeah, John asked us to. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, this was No, this was Meet the Bears. And we're working we're on that bonfire. I, I don't try to get a mic for the bonfire too. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> that sometimes you can only hear if you're right next to the speakers. But uh, thanks to the VF, the Washington VFW, um, we started off the school year with two excellent uh, teacher and service days, and we're excited about Monday for the first uh, when students arrive for their first day of school. It's Monday, Mr. Easton. <laughs> we're just sleeping in. Um, <laughs> we have to talk about the <laughs> again. And we're going to reconvene the safety committee hopefully in September when things die down. But we placed room numbers. We talked about that already. In the earlier board meeting, the exterior windows and larger numbers of the doors. But we also uh, are in the process of upgrading that in cameras as well as adding some keyless entry doors to the interior so that we can lock down the elementary. So sometimes when the high school leaves and they float down this way, or someone could float down this way. If we put a fob on that door, at that time we can lock it, and parents will have to check in, make sure they check in. Just some more security measures. Uh, but as we talk about that, uh, we kind of put on the back burner about the front door attendance last year. It was, we talked about we two half-time positions, and um, I think it was costing the district about $15,000, the way we had it set up. And um, it's just something that we kind of put on the back burner because of safety grants. The fact of the, uh, they talked about levies for security, what direction you want to go. We had a great presentation uh, with Dan Valentine and John Saldana uh, here uh, for one of the in-service. They talked about hours training, informed our staff what it was, uh, and uh, to see if you know if we want to tweak our lockdown procedure. But um, you know, it's something that I think we need to discuss. I, I know that this, uh, you know not be the time and place uh, how we want to do this but uh, the other thing I have for discussion is in the parking lot in front of the school in the parking in front of the school we talked briefly at other board meetings about signs it's hard to get safety vehicles up that lane right. when you're parked yes. all the way down the lane I complained about that from day one so uh, we did have a, a sign made up and I was going to bring it to show to you and they would say no parking bodies will be fined and towed and they would be all the way down the lane and that would give us the opportunity to do that to tell our private practices. So that's all I have. What's all the going Uh any discussion? I, I, yeah, I'm gonna start go. with um, Michael since oh. he's I'm gonna be here. Uh twofold question. The fifteen thousand dollars, I know before with some emails or phone calls we talked about perhaps where we could be creative and try to come up with that money. It's it, probably the second bigger question is has there been any news from the state in the last 30 to 60 days of funding for 2014? Well, they have, they passed a safety bill, but it's one-time money. Right. So you could... We like one-time money. Put, yeah, one-time money. <laughs> you could put that <laughs> in. Well, and it's first come, first serve. So we should do it now. Well, it's September. It's coming out. How much are we talking for one-time lead time? It's, there's no limit, I don't think. Yeah, I, 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 well, well, to be spent on what? 
It has to be on Sa safety upgrades to cameras. the school. The doors. Three new school buses, that's safety. <laughs> no, so let me ask you, one time money, but can you structure a one time plan to hire a person and upfront they get three years worth of pay and they're in the position? Or see I haven't looked at the actual details of the bill when it comes to salaries. Yeah. So that's something we're going to have to check they, they into. release the money and how to apply it in September. Because so. I want to work in the rules as best we can to maximize. Well, the nice thing is the the senator from Canfield is the one that has the bill. So, mm -hmm. and I've I've spoke with him once well, about it. Yeah, yeah. Not... So we can talk to him about it too. Because we talked about that front gate for a year and a half. Ago. Where are we at? What are we doing? Yeah. It's been the yeah, we've been uh, where are we at with the collective five of us on posting a person there full time during the school year? Well, if we pay for the safety thing, I'm on it right now. You know, I mean that's my question is where are we getting the money? You know, if we, if we could be from there, that's great. Like I said, I've got September. The guidelines and the procedure. For the next meeting then? It'll be I should. So we should, should buy the next meeting if it's if you should thing. Okay. Is there other things that we could buy with that money? Should we be getting ready for it? We have a month, I mean you know, how about yeah. extended cameras? I mean like they said again on the front, I mean yeah, there's a lot of possibilities. A lot of possibilities. Mm -hmm. could you I mean I, this sounds crazy, but I mean could you possibly do something to get like a gator for the school so you would have like not only rust or if there's someone in public safety or someone in the front door that could go around the building. I mean, you know, how? Do we have a gator? Do we need another gator? I mean, really looking one time, it's one time money. I've never shot the rulies. What do you mean a gator? You know, the little carts. Oh, you need a John Deere gator. It's not like one of those. I think of gates. No, gates, but. Are there any other things where you can like lock down half the school with an automatic lockdowns of the facilities already? Like the large part wants to go into like or build a safe room or if there's money that's available, I want to know what options we have. You know, take them all downstairs to the basement, lock down that basement that's useless. Well, I mean, there is. It's it's funny. There was a thing on the news, and I think they're out of Akron or Camden. They specialize in bulletproofing schools. It was just on the news, and that's what the, 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 everything they can bulletproof everything. Windows, you know, mirrors, you know, whatever you want, bulletproof, they can doors, basement block. I mean, you know, they, they have still sheets that you could put in. I don't, and, and, and curiosities, when you get extensive of that, does that affect the fire guidelines? You got to remember, too, that uh, you have to remember that with the, and we haven't made a decision yet, but with the hours training, part of that is to, to get out of the building. Right. Not, 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 not to stay in the city, no. You know, break the window to, to, to do things. Okay. So, you know, we need a nice that. workshop. Yeah, yeah. With Dr. Yeah. yeah, and you know, and, and like I said, Chief and Dan, Chief and Danny did a great job in the presentation against the staff. I can bring them in for a workshop. Was he getting excited about something like this? I, uh, you know, I, everybody I talked to said it was the best human service days that we've had in a long time. They got a couple sets since they've been here. Uh, really? Dan did a good job. Excited is. There's some apprehension, and I can see why, because you're the first line of defense. You know, and you put your students there. A little nervous. Yeah, a little nervous of that. But, we gotta, but all we did was introduce, say, hey, you know, we work as a team. We're going to introduce what's out there. This is the this is the new... Um, the old way was to hunker down, and then the yeah. Allison way is to exit the building. So there's... Well, like, like if we're in the building here, and, <coughs> and there's a shooter, instead of saying code blue, and then say, tell everybody what's going on. There's a shooter in room 211. Can you walk this and get all these these students out of here? Rather than them come down the hall. And that's sort of one of the things we talked about when we were originally uh, doing, you know, upping the security after uh, the problem over the holidays, mm -hmm. is the door lock. Because if you had, like the way your doors are throughout the whole building, if you had a door lock on the bottom of the door either way, you could prevent the door from opening and it would be very cost efficient. It would be a simple cost efficient like thing to either lock you know, if you, say if the shooter was in a room, if you wanted to lock him in that room, like you said, so everyone else could get out, well, there's no way your arm's going to go down there and move that lock. Right. You know, or vice versa. If he's right. outside, at least this way you can go, you know, buy yourself a minute so everyone gets out of the building. Sure. Right. And that wouldn't be something that's towards intervention. Well, I mean, if, 
Hey, what if, there, if there's those, I mean, we could figure out how many, 200, 300 doors times how many ever locks would petition for that, too. You know, and at least Russ can have an, an, an install them at its convenience, you know, a couple here, a couple no, there. That's why it's intriguing when she said there's no limit. Yeah, yeah right? Because, I mean, so so let's list down some dreams and then get what we can get. But if it's, right. if it's first come, first serve, and we only have a month for us to all to throw some emails around with each other and throw some ideas out, because I would imagine, unless the school board's sleeping, they're going to, you know, this will be gone by Halloween. Yeah, by that time. Yeah. By the inner city school for the village. All right. Okay. I don't have anything. You want to go around the table? And the, uh, let's go. Well, that was the start of open discussion with Michael. Mr. Easton. I had the opportunity to, and this is just kind of overseeing kids, I had the opportunity to watch my daughter um, perform in a set of tryouts. Three or four trials, and it was I had no contact with her. I could observe, but I had no contact with her. It's a very eye-opening experience if you do it with an open mind. And whatever your child does, or a child does, whether it be music, recital, or something like that, I think it's always good to put them under a little bit of that pressure to perform. Because I saw some things that were very good, I saw some things that were very, well, not very bad, but you know, negatives. I guess my point is, a lot of us don't put ourselves or maybe even our siblings or our children in those positions because fear of failure. But failure to prepare is preparing to fail in life later on. And it was just, I guess the advice is put your kids out there and, and make them and let them perform because they will. You and you know where you, you and you know where you stand. Them. What's that? You can learn from failure. You can learn, right, from small little mistakes. But you put them out there, and then they then you know what you need to work on, whether it's in math or, or reading or, or any subject in school or just like it was a real eye-opening experience. Yeah, but just keep in mind, you and Stephanie are engaged. So there's a cell face to put in. Cell face. Sales? Yeah. Cell face. Thank you. Putting your kid out there, you guys are their support when you fall. Right. We need to make sure that all the parents in the community not only do that, but they're there to support when failures do occur. It's a pretty humbling failures. experience. And it, it's a neat experience. I mean, you can't, you don't, you can't consider yourself the best unless you play the best. Sure. And, uh, Learn a lot. That's your. That's my That's The deepest <laughs> philosophical comments I've heard you say since about four thirty. Thanks, John. Um, I just like to remind this Saturday seven o'clock we are reigniting yes. the Tony University Pontiana football alumni game. You playing? Oh boy! I'm not alumni. This Saturday. This Saturday. This Saturday. Wow! How long has that been going? It's been going 10, 12 years. Flag right. or tackle? No. Tackle. Pads or no pads? Thank no God pads. I'm from New Jersey. <laughs> they put pads on? Yeah. We have the oldest one playing. They put pads on? That's awesome. And Danny Guido. Oh Danny gosh. said he wants to touch the ball at least twice. Oh, he'll be out. Wow. <laughs> so that's it. We're going to pass. It's always been there. But where's the toe at this year? Where's it going to be, John? The toe's going to kick it. There. It's here? So how many EMS per school? <laughs> <laughs> okay. One from each township. No, we don't have the toe tip this year. He's he's done. You wouldn't have <laughs> he's, he's done. No, he, he would never survive. Well, Rich, your first uh, chance to give us a little round table. Yeah. We'd just like to say thank you for the opportunity and look forward to working with a great group of guys. And women. Well, it's one month at a time for probation. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, welcome, welcome to Miller. So. And I've got uh, no other issues. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Second. Do we have any oh, session? Uh, we said no okay. session. Do we have any session? Uh, Jen, take a roll to adjourn. Mr. Ryder? Yes. Mr. Rowley? Yes. Mr. Easton? Yes. Mr. Hendricks? Yes. Mr. Jennings? Sure.
Yeah, I'm with you.